Hello. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you a better approach for wrapping models. Instead of using point correspondences, we will be using splines to specify where certain edge loops should be located on the target scan. I'm going to start with an empty project. Let's go ahead and load an actor's scan. In this case, I will use the scan of Alex from our gallery. All right, so here is our scan. Let's suppose we want to convert it into a nice production-ready topology. I'm going to use a base mesh that you can find in the standard wrap gallery. So, let me load it here. And let me also delete these nodes, as we don't need eyeballs in this tutorial. Suppose we need to wrap this base mesh onto this scan. To do that, we can use a fast wrapping node. I'm going to plug my base mesh into the first input and my scan into the second input and then click Compute. The wrapping went pretty well, except that the eyeball sockets came out very distorted. We can quickly fix it by using a Select Polygons node. Let me select the polygons on our base mesh that we want to exclude from our wrapping process. You can use manual polygon selection, or, like in my case, you can use a predefined set of polygroups on the mesh. So, let me select the eye sockets, and also the mouth socket polygons. All right. Now, if I plug the polygon selection into the wrapping node and click Compute again, you can see that this time the artifacts on the eye sockets are gone, but we still have a few issues on the other parts of the mesh. For example, on the eyelids, on the ears, and the lips. Previously, to fix these artifacts, we would need to provide a set of point correspondences and manually specify an equal number of points for both the base mesh and the scan. But that doesn't always guarantee a good result, and we often end up adding more and more points. In the latest version of Wrap, we added a new node called Select Points with Splines, which I've personally been waiting for for quite a long time. Let's move on and see how it works. I'm going to create a Select Points with Splines node and connect my base mesh here. Let's turn off the Snap to Vertices mode for now. What I'm going to do is draw a spline on my mesh and when I finish drawing my spline I can click enter or the right mouse button then I can drag any point to adjust the spline shape. I can also click on any empty area of the spline to add more points if needed. You can delete points using control and click and this is how I create and edit my spline curve. With this done, I can go ahead and click the mirror button. It will automatically duplicate my spline to the other side of the model. Now we need to draw corresponding splines on the actor's scan. To do that, let me create another Select Points with Splines node. Once again, I'm going to turn off Snap to Vertices. And then, I just start adding the points for my spline. Now I can go ahead and adjust the shape of the spline until I'm happy with the result. Unfortunately, this time we can't mirror it. We have to draw the spline for the other ear manually because scans do not have topological symmetry. Let me add just a few more points here. Please keep in mind that the result of the node is just a set of named points on the surface. Under the hood, the node resamples the splines with a large number of points. If you switch from spline view to point view, you can see the corresponding points after the sampling. Splines allow us to modify all these points with a small number of control handles. Alright, now that we have the spline correspondences, we just need to convert the resulting points into point pairs. 
To do that, we can use a points to points pairs node. Let me plug in the results of the select points with splines nodes here. This node will basically match the points from the left and right by name and combine them into point pairs. And now we can plug these point pairs into the fast wrapping node and click the compute button. We can see that the ear shapes are nearly perfect thanks to our spline selection, but we still have problems with the eyelids. So let's go ahead and fix them. I'm going to zoom in over here. From the texture guide that comes with the base mesh, we can see that this particular edge loop corresponds to the eyelash attachment line. Let me turn on snap to vertices. I can click here and start drawing a spline following this edge loop. But there is a faster way to do this, so I'll just delete this spline, and instead I can just click over here, then hold the shift key, and then drag my cursor to the desired vertex and click. And to create a spline, I press enter. This way I can easily create a new spline, repeating any edge loop. Let me create the bottom spline starting from the same vertex as the top one. But if I simply click on the existing spline handle and start dragging it, I will adjust the spline shape. So in order to create a new spline from the same point, I can click anywhere on the model surface and drag this point to the desired location. Or I can simply press Alt and click on the existing spline to start creating a new one. If I click the Shift key and drag the cursor, I can create a second spline with literally just two button clicks. Now I need to create splines for the other eyelid. To do that, I can hold the Shift key and click on the first spline that we drew. The spline will become selected in my spline list. Now I can mirror it. I can also select the spline by simply finding it in the list of splines. Let me mirror the bottom spline too. Now I'm going to draw the corresponding splines for the actor. Make sure that you draw the splines in the same order. That is, this one goes first, this one second, this one third, and this one fourth. Let me turn on the lighting for this model. Let's start with the top eyelid. OK, now let's create the bottom eyelid spline. All right, then let's draw the splines on the opposite side. Remember that when we mirror a spline, its starting point is also mirrored. As we start at the spline from the outer eye corner, the mirrored spline should start from the outer corner as well. If for some reason you mix up the starting point, for example, like this, you can always click the reverse button, and that will basically reverse the order of the spline points. OK, the splines are ready. We can go to the fast wrapping node again and click the compute button. Now you can see that our eyes were wrapped very accurately. I'm going to add a few more splines to match the polygon flow for the nasolabial fold and the lips. First, let me select spline for the nasolabial fold. I'm going to mirror it. Then I'm going to draw a corresponding spline on my actor.
Let's do the same for the lips. I want this lip loop to match perfectly with the contour of the actor's lips. Let me draw a corresponding spline on the actor's scan. What I like about using splines is that I don't need to care about the number of points, nor the order of points that I draw. The node will take care of sampling the splines with an equal number of points. So, now that we've selected all the splines, we can go to the Fast Wrapping node again and click Compute. The wrapping result looks very good, except for the inner part of the lips. Let's see if we can add splines to the lips wet line to make sure the lips are perfectly closed. Since we don't see the inner part of the lips on the base mesh, we can use a little trick. I'm going to create a brush node. Let me enable the topological symmetry and geodesic distance options. I'm going to slightly open the lower lip and this way I will be able to draw splines on the inner part of the lips. Now I'll click accept. I'm going to plug the result of the brush node into the Select Points with Splines node. Now, let's draw a spline corresponding to the wet line of the lower lip. It's going to be this edge loop. Let's do the same for the upper lip. OK, now I can draw a corresponding spline on the actor's mesh. Let's start with the lower lip. Then let's create a spline for the upper lip. It's going to be the same shape as the previous one, so we can create it simply by snapping it to the same control points. We can also go here to the Parameter tab of the Fast Wrapping node and increase the smoothness final parameter to make the mesh smoother. I think the wrapping results look good now. As a final touch, I'm going to fix these minor artifacts on the lip corners. To do that, I'll create a brush node. I'll plug the wrapping result into the first input, the scan into the second input, and the neutral base mesh into the third input. Let me set the symmetry mode to topological and turn on the Use Geodesic Distance option. I'm going to use the clone brush to copy local surface details from the original base mesh to the wrap model. Let me also close the gaps between the lips using the move brush. Now we can click the Accept button. OK, so this is how we can use the new Select Points with Splines node to have better control over the edge loops of our wrap model. You can go further and add eyebrows, eyelid folds, a jawline, and other splines to further improve the wrapping. I hope you like this new tool. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.